<sighs> All right, guys. This is not going to be the normal kind of video that I make. <laughs> So my friends at Sweetwater hit me up and asked me if I would like to do a video on the new Warm Audio WACX12, the C12 copy basically. And I said that I would only do a video if I could compare it to the $25,000 vintage one and also be brutally honest about my thoughts on it. So yes, this is a real vintage C12. These go for somewhere between $21,000 and $25,000. Thank you so much to Blackbird Audio Rentals for hooking me up with this. If you ever want to rent any vintage gear, go check out the link in the description. You can rent any microphones or hardware or anything, any vintage or expensive piece of gear. You can rent it from them. So thank you, Blackbird, for hooking me up with this for this video. But the point that I want to get across here before we get going is one, I have no idea how these are gonna compare. Two, I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to recommend this, so you're gonna have to stay tuned to the end of the video. And three, this is not the kind of video that I normally make. I think what you guys probably don't see, well you certainly don't see it, and you probably don't realize, there's so much gear that shows up here that never even sees an Instagram post, much less a YouTube video. It's for one very specific reason. It's because it doesn't do anyone any good for me to make a video about something that I'm not super into. If I don't love the product and feel I can recommend it, then I will never make a video about it. And that's how I've always run this channel. So when Sweetwater said Warm Audio would like to have me make a video on this, I said only if I'm brutally, brutally honest about it. And they said that's what they want. So kudos to Warm Audio for having me make a video about this, having no idea what I'm actually gonna say about it. Sweetwater doesn't get to see this video before it's posted. Warm Audio doesn't get to see this video before it's posted. What we are going to do today is we are going to compare the Warm Audio CX-12 against a vintage C-12. We're gonna run through drum overheads. We're gonna go through some female vocals. We're gonna go through some acoustic guitar. Let's see how this goes. You guys are finding out with me what I think about these. I, I don't no, I haven't actually heard these next to each other yet. So let's let's see if warm audio microphones suck. So as always, there will be links below to go check this microphone out or pick one up if you would like to. If you use those links to buy anything, not just this microphone, it really helps the channel out. Thank you very much. So I think the first thing that we should talk about is the fact that this is a thousand dollar microphone, nine ninety nine U.S. dollars. And so knowing that it was a thousand dollars before I unboxed it made the unboxing experience surprisingly pleasant. It comes in a, a really actually nice tweed case. Uh, the microphone itself feels heavy and, and like it, it feels premium. It does not feel like a cheap microphone. The box, the, the tweed case does not feel cheap. The power supply feels good. The cables are nice. Uh, it comes with extra strings for the shock mount. The shock mount feels less than premium, but more than adequate. And actually, when holding them side by side, the I think the warm audio surprisingly feels more premium. I can't believe I'm saying that. This is like $25,000, but this is lighter for sure. The warm is heavier. So inside this tweed case, the microphone is sitting in a, it's a pretty nice box. You get the shock mount, you get the power supply, obviously you get all the cables, you get a couple extra elastic strings for the shock mount, which is not something I've seen before. So big kudos to Warm on the packaging and the presentation. This whole unboxing experience feels much more high end than $1,000. What does it sound like? All right, so we are here at the beautiful Studio A at Sweetwater with my new friend Adam right here. Hi. You guys have to go check out his channel. Uh, I watched three videos in a row last night and I was like totally blown away at how he, like drum instruction and stuff. I'll put his links down below. So what we're gonna do is we're going to play drums. We've got two of the CX-12s uh, right up top here and they're right next to real C-12s, Telefunk and C-12s, the current production. And uh, there's gonna be links in the description below for you to download these files. He's gonna play some awesome stuff. You guys can download them and actually compare these overheads to each other to see what you think about these microphones. You good? Good to go. Let's go.
bro. <laughs> That's what's up. Cool. So don't forget to go check out Orlando Drummer on YouTube. I'll put links to his YouTube channel uh, down below. Incredible YouTube channel. And I really appreciate him taking the time to film with me for this video. Okay, let's get into some acoustic guitar. Here we go. So once again, I have the pleasure of having Haley Verhalen here to test out this microphone for vocals, one of my favorite singers. I'll put links to all of her stuff down below as well, including songs of hers that I've actually produced. Thank you so much, Haley, for being a part of this. The best things in life, they fly right by, like climbing trees and catching fireflies. Today will be just a memory Might as well make it worth remembering yeah. The best things in life They fly right by Like climbing trees and catching fireflies Today will be just a memory Might as well make it worth remembering yeah. Cause I'm driving right down the middle of a two-lane road And I can't tell if I'm coming or going I should have seen the wrong way sign And I shouldn't let this heart of mine Take the wheel from my hands whenever it wants to. I wish I didn't want you. Cause I'm driving right down the middle of a two lane road. And I can't tell if I'm coming or going. I should have seen the wrong way sign. And I shouldn't let this heart of mine Take the wheel from my hands whenever it wants to. I wish I didn't want you. All right, huge shout out to my buddy Ben Miller right here. Thank you for coming over. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> and singing on this. All his info down below. Go check out his music, his Instagram, all that stuff. Thanks, man. Appreciate, Appreciate you. It. Okay, so I have to be honest. I actually had to sleep on these results to really wrap my head around this and <laughs> figure out how I'm going to end this video. On one hand, I am truly shocked at how close this is to the vintage one that I had in here. Now, a couple things. One, all the vintage ones sound different. Put 10 of them right next to each other. All 10 are going to sound different. The warm sounded damn near identical to the vintage unit that I had in here. Don't forget to hit the link in the description to download these files so you can really A, B, and play with EQ and stuff and see what you think. But it was interesting to me how the differences between the warm and the vintage one showed up on different things. For instance, on acoustic guitar, I thought that the warm had just a little bit less like 200-ish and it had a little bit less super top end, like 15, 20K. And we're talking like 1 dB, 1 and a half dB. And then I thought that on female vocals it sounded I don't know, but the same. <laughs> so, okay, so to answer the title of the video, do warm mics suck? No, no, they certainly do not, or at least this one certainly does not. I would challenge anyone in a blind test to pick out the warm, actually, and that is not the result that I expected going into this video. So hit the links in the description if you want to pick up one of these warm CX-12s. I think the bigger question we need to answer right now is who buys the vintage one? Who, when you can buy this for $1,000, who spends twenty dollars or $25,000 on a vintage one? 
we're gonna use a totally different example for this. So if you have a Blue Stripe 1176 replica, there's a whole bunch of companies that make 1176 replicas and a whole bunch of companies that make Blue Stripes that are silver-faced with a Blue Stripe on. And when someone walks in your room, whether it's a client that knows anything about gear or other producers, maybe you have a commercial facility, maybe you're renting your facility out or renting gear out, there's probably not gonna be very many people that walk in and they're like, Oh, that's incredible. You have a replica blue stripe. That's so amazing. But if you had a real one, there's going to be some people that are like, holy cow, you have a real blue stripe? Same thing with like a Fairchild. You know, when I track drums with Lester Estelle, I was literally chatting with him last night, figuring out how to end this video. When you walk into Lester's room and there's a real vintage Fairchild 670 sitting there, you're like, holy crap, that's a real Fairchild? You would never get that reaction if it was a replica, especially an affordable replica. When you reach for the knobs on those rare, vintage, expensive pieces of gear, when you reach for the rare vintage microphone that cost a fortune, there is a vibe, there is an emotional reaction that at least I have to that. But this warm is $1,000 and that vintage one was twenty to $25,000. So is that emotional reaction that I have to the real vintage ones, is, is that worth $24,000? <sighs> Let me know in the comments down below because I'm pretty blown away by how close this was to the actual vintage unit. Don't forget to hit the links in the description to go check this microphone out or any other piece of gear that I use. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.